Yes, you know what this screen means. We've got a brand new update to GarageBand here on the iPhone and the iPad. In this one, we've got iOS 13 and iPad OS support. We've got new external file storage support, improvements to our Apple Loop searching and quality, and a brand new hip hop sound pack. So in this video, I'm gonna take you on a tour of all of these new features. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Life Today, where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And GarageBand here on iOS is something that I love using. And we have finally got a new version update. Version 2.3.8 is the first one since November 2018. So it's been long awaited and we've got some pretty cool new features in this one. So let's jump in and take a look at what we've got. Now we'll go through each of these features, but if you do want to jump around, there's some links in the description to timestamps where you can go straight into the particular feature you want. But let's take a look at the notes here of what we've got. So we've got support for dark mode and the new share sheet in iOS 13 and also in iPad OS 13. So we'll show you what that looks like and what the changes are there. We can access files from external hard drives, SD card readers, and USB drives, which is a cool new feature of the new iOS. We've got improved audio Audio fidelity, so the quality of our Apple loops when making tempo and key changes has been improved. We'll take a bit of a listen and see if we can tell if we've got those improvements in there. A new downloadable Skyline Heat sound pack with a collection of over 350 new hip hop loops and six drum kits. Very cool. And one of my favorite features is the ability to search for Apple loops by the sound library pack name, something I've been wanting for many, many years. Plus, we've got those all important performance and stability improvements and there are some additional sort of cosmetic changes that I'm going to show you in this video as well. So let's stop talking and start showing and get in to the detail of this new update. So let's start with the dark mode support. Now you might be thinking, look, GarageBand's already pretty dark here, Pete. We've already got a black background and a dark theme, but the problem has always been that whenever you go back out into your My Songs or you do anything else, boom, you're hit with this bright white light. So if we engage dark mode here, so I've got it set up here on my control panel. So I'm gonna tap on dark mode like that. And then dark mode is now on. You can see it looks so much nicer. We've got the nice black background and it's not so jarring when we're coming in and out of projects. So that is all pretty cool, but there's also a new share sheet functionality and you can see even the My Songs icon there is dark mode now. So if we go back to My Songs and we share this track, so what we're gonna do, we'll grab my mouse and we'll select, yes, mouse support is here in iOS 13. We'll tap select and then we'll tap on our test track here. In the bottom left, we're gonna tap on the share icon here to go into our share options. And again, look nice blue on dark gray. So this is looking much nicer than it did in light mode before. We're gonna tap on song and we're gonna go, yep, uncompressed wave is fine for this demo. And look at this, we've got our new share sheet up above the top there, you can message to people, but you've got all of your apps along here that you can send this project to. We've got my shortcuts that I've got set up here, and then we can open it in any other app that we like there, and we can save it to our files and Dropbox and all of those good things. So having the new share sheet here in GarageBand is really gonna help out for when you're sharing your projects with other people. We can zip them up now, we can do all sorts of cool things, and I've got other videos all about the new features of iOS 13 and iPadOS, which I'll link up the top and in the description. So a good new change here, the dark mode integration and the new share sheet in GarageBand. Let's now take a look at USB file support. So if you have a hard drive, a flash drive, or an SD card reader that you want to use with your iPhone or your iPad, you can plug it in via the Lightning to USB adapter cable. And I've got a video showing exactly how to do that in iOS 13 and iPad OS 13 linked up above and in the description. So here it is. I've plugged in a couple of drives here. I'm gonna click or tap on About Time, which is a USB flash drive. And what you can see is I've already tested this out as to whether I can create an, a software right here on an external drive. Now, would I recommend this? Probably not. I would use these to back up your songs rather than actually creating and recording it there for a couple of reasons that I'll show you here now. So let's just do a quick test run. I'm gonna tap on create song here. Let's just load up the keyboard. Now you can instantly see there, we've got a bit more of a delay here because it's using the flash drive. And then we get this warning. This current song 
is located on an external storage device. Avoid removing while the song is open, otherwise recordings or other data could be lost. So there's the second warning. It's going to be slower, and if you accidentally remove it while you're recording, you could lose some of your recordings. So I would still record to your internal drive and then maybe transfer a backup version over here. But if we just hit record on this one, let's just record a quick uh, bit of nothingness just so that we can, uh, we can save this out because if you don't have anything on there, it won't actually save it as a song. Well, now, if we click or tap in the top left, we'll go back to my songs. It's going to save that out. And again, you can see it's a little bit slower. But there it is, my song. It is right here with our other song. So we can use external storage devices to save our .band GarageBand project files. But again, my recommendation would be to actually continue using your iCloud drive or your on my iPhone storage location and then maybe copy or duplicate a backup over to your USB drives. But still, a very cool new feature here in GarageBand 2.3.8. Okay, enough about dark mode, enough about file management. We want to jump into the music side here. So I've got a fresh blank project here, and I'm going to show you one of the cool new features, which is the ability to search via a sound library pack in our Loops browser. So I'm going to tap in the top right on our Loops browser like so, and here we go. We've got our regular Loops browser here that we've always had. We can just drag any of these loops into our project, but you'll notice a new feature here, this filter by. We can tap on filter by, and we can actually filter by a type of sound pack, a type of loop, and even the scale that the loop is using. So let's jump in and show you all three of these now. So to filter by a sound pack, we tap on the sound packs option. And then you'll see here that all of these are actually ticked by default. So we've got all of our different sound packs from our different sound library packs all ready to go. But if we want to choose just one, and what we're going to choose is our new Skyline Heat. All we need to do is scroll down and tap on that one. And you'll see that that's now the only one that's ticked here. If we tap back to filter by and go back to our Apple loops, then here you go. We've got all of these new loops which we're going to jump into and show you in a moment because we've got a heap of new loops in the new sound library pack. There's other ways that we can filter as well. So if we scroll back up, we tap on our filter by, we can tap on types here. And again, we can tap here. We've got audio loops, MIDI loops, and drummer loops, which is really cool. So if we want just the audio loops, we tap on audio loops, back to filter by, and it's removed the other loop types from there. And if you want to learn about all the different types of loops, there's a video linked up the top and in the description of this one. So that's another cool function. And what is even cooler is you'll notice we have scale here. So if we tap on scale, we can now go with minor, major, or neither, or both. So if we want to make sure that we have a major scale, because we're making a funky, happy beat, we can tap on major there, go back to our Apple loops, and now we will only have those loops that fit into the major scale, which for hip hop is only these two different types. So there you go. That is how we use the new filter option here in GarageBand, a very cool and long-awaited addition for those of us who love using Apple loops. Let's now take a quick diversion over to our sound library because we want to take a look at this new Skyline Heat hip hop pack. So we're going to tap on sound library. There it is in the top right corner. So we're going to tap that one there. And if we scroll down here, what have we got? Well, we've got over 350 Apple loops, six drum kits and two live loops grid. And the description, I will let you read. Hit pause and read that one for yourself. We've got too much to cover to go into description. So we've already downloaded it. If you haven't downloaded it, press the download button in your sound library and then you'll have this downloaded. Let's jump back over to our project, bring in some loops and take a listen to some of the sounds we have in the Skyline Heat pack. So we'll tap on our loops browser again. We'll go to our filter here. Uh, let's just make this audio loops. That's fine. We'll make this back to any and we'll make sure we're on Skyline Heat. And here you can see we have a bunch of different types and each one of these, so around the block and then deep sleep and then we keep scrolling down and then we've got hushed tones. So all of these kind of go together. You can mix and match, but they're all designed to kind of go together. And now that we can finally search via a pack, it's going to make it a whole lot easier to use these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of these loops and just give you a bit of a listen to what some of the vibe is of these and show you that additional feature around the quality when we change the pitch or the BPM of our track. So I've decided to just go with the keep shining pack for whatever reason. Uh, let's just tap on say the synth chords. 
That's a cool one. And this is going to be a melodic sound that's going to help us test out this new feature of apparently better fidelity here. So we're going to tap and hold, drag that over, drop it into our project there. Now let's just sort of add in some other melody sounds. We'll come back here to this one. What about some sort of piano do we have? Did I see something like that here before? A piano melody. There we go. Let's grab a piano melody. If we just tap one of these to try it out. That's a bit weird. What about... That could be cool. Tap and hold, drag that one over to our project and now play these two together. That's sounding pretty cool. Let's just add in, we've got some cool kick drums and hi-hats and things here. We'll just grab a kick drum here. Grab this, throw it into our track as well. Turn the volume down a little bit and take a listen to these together. Very cool. So yeah, you probably know how to use loops and, and how to bring loops in. If you don't, again, there's some other videos linked in the description. But yeah, there's a bunch of really cool hip hop sounds in this new pack. And yes, I will have a follow up video where I go through the pack in more detail. But let's take a look at these loops because what Apple is claiming is the fidelity is going to be better if we change these around. So what I'm going to do in the top right here, I'm going to tap on the settings here. Let's just transpose this. We're in C at the moment. Let's take it down to maybe an A and hit done on that one. And now let's take a listen to this sound. And look, it's going to be totally subjective, but what they're saying here is in the past, when you've changed the speed or the pitch of a loop, you get some of those artifacts in there. And apparently they've improved the sampling and they've improved the behind the scenes stuff that makes it sound better. Let's just do another change here. If we were to change the tempo, uh, let's change the tempo down to something lower and take a listen because this is where it can often sound really bad. Let's hit play on this. So, I mean, you wouldn't have it that slow. But yeah, look, I'm, I'm hearing that the quality is pretty good there. The test of this will be when we start using it. So if you start using this, make sure you drop a comment. Let me know. Are you noticing the quality of these audio loops is better when you are transposing them or you're changing the pitch or the tempo of your tracks or of your entire song? So there you go. There's a couple of, uh, a couple of features there. We've taken a look at both the new pack here in a little bit of detail, but also thrown in a little look at the new looped quality. Let's jump back over now because this new pack has got some other sounds in here. So let's take a look at those. So we're going to hit the plus button down the bottom here because we're going to add in some drums. So let's come over. What I might do is I'll use the beat sequencer. That's always a good way to sort of preview some of these new drum sounds. So we'll go to drums, we'll tap beat sequencer and we'll load it up here. Now, if we wanted to, we can tap in the top left here and change from this modern 808 kit by tapping on that one. And let's now go to recently downloaded here because what we're gonna be able to do is find our new drummers here. So we'll scroll down to Skyline Heat and here are our six new drum sounds. So I won't go through all of these, I'll let you have a play yourself, but let's go with something maybe like a hard bounce. This could be interesting. There you go, there's your hard bounce sound. Uh, we'll just turn that off for now. Let's turn our uh, tempo back up a bit. We don't want a hip hop uh, beat like this to be so slow. Let's bring it back up to about one, 116 should be good. Let's uh, turn it back on again now. Very cool, I like that sound if we add that in. So let's hit the record button to add that into our track we've been working on here. And we'll record. Okay, very, very cool. And we'll go back to our track view here. And yeah, there you go. We've recorded that in and we can now start adjusting that. So we've got some new drum beats in there that we can use. And don't forget, you can use those in any of your drums. In your, You can go into acoustic drums like this, tap on this one, and then actually change up the drum kit. So come in here, do the same sort of thing. Recently downloaded Skyline Heat. If we want to say the red line, now we can... We can actually play it ourselves just like that. So there's a bunch of different ways. There's one more addition here, which is in our live loops grid. So let's jump over to that and show you now.
Now to get to live loops, we're going to tap on our instrument selector here in the top left, and we're going to tap, instead of tracks tab at the top here, we're going to tap on live loops. And this brings us over to our live loops grids. Now, our new ones are usually stored to the very far right, so we're going to scroll across, we're going to get all the way over there, and we're going to take a look here. No, we don't have it. There's one. There's the Skyline Masher from our Skyline, uh, Skyline Heat Pack. And I can't find the, there it is, Skyline Heat from Skyline Heat. So let's tap on Skyline Heat because it's got a cool little logo there. And it'll bring us into our Live Loops grid here, where if you haven't used Live Loops before, check out the video up the top there and in the description. But we can actually tap on any one of these and it will just start playing that particular loop. We can then mix in others and bring it all together. A little bit of melody. More sounds here. Very cool. We'll stop that one for now. And you can also tap on an entire row and bring in all of those samples at once. And get a sound like that. So yes, that we've got some new Live Loops grid here. So again, if you're new to music creation and you want to use your Live Loops view, you can jump in here and do that and experiment with the new Live Loops packs that we have here from the Skyline Heat. So let's finish up here by showing a couple of the cosmetic changes that we have here in this new version. And they're very subtle, but what you'll notice is that some of our icons here, so this mixer icon that we have up the top here, and this metronome icon, they're a little bit curvier. So they're basically just adjusting and adapting to the new iOS 13 look and feel so that they can match some of the newer devices. So not a major change there, but as you're clicking and tapping around, you'll probably notice that some of those icons look a little bit curvier than they did in previous versions. The only other thing we have in the update notes is those all important bug fixes and stability improvements. And the only way to test that will be to actually use the software. So my question to you is, are you using iOS 13? Are you using iPad OS 13? And will you be trying out the new GarageBand 2.3.8? If you do, let me know what you think. If you find additional things that are cool, new features that I didn't cover, drop those in the comments because I'll be returning with another video to show you more about the new Skyline Heat Pack and some more cool features here in GarageBand. For now, there are two videos linked down below that can help you create better music in GarageBand. You can also click or tap on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next video.